I've described what linear relationships should look like. What about relationships that are nonlinear? For instance, curved or clustered relationships. What is, what's a curved relationship? A curved relationship could look like this. Using a line would be inadequate at hitting all the points or most of the points. It would be a very weak linear relationship, in fact. However, what we do see is a curved relationship between these variables. So there is a relationship here. We aren't going to discuss how to estimate this relationship for prediction purposes as we will for the linear relationship, but that's something you can discuss in, in higher level classes. But rest assured, uh, statistics can be used to estimate this relationship and use it for prediction. So this is a, a curve relationship. And what about a clustered relationship? A clustered relationship could look like this. And what you see are what you see are clusters of points that clearly have a linear strong negative relationship between y and x but two distinct relationships if however I was to try and estimate all the data with one relationship it would be linear, weak, and positive. So, what's the tip here for clustered relationships and for curved relationships? You would need to make a graph first, make a scatter plot first look at your data and decide how you're going to analyze it. In this case of clusters, you'd probably want to estimate a line for this set of points and estimate a different line for this set of points and try and, and identify what it is that's clustering these observations together. One explanation might be gender. Maybe men behave this way and women behave this way. By de identifying a rationale for the clusters, you could introduce this categorical variable into your analysis. Consider this example. Say that we were plotting the number of hours soap operas were watched against, or sorry, Let's say that um, in the right way. We're going to plot well-being on this axis. It's this a common measure. Um, surveys can collect data that estimate well-being. And we're going to plot that against the number of hours soap operas were watched. What do we find? The more soap operas watched, the lower the well-being for this group, the more soap operas watched, the lower the well-being for this group, but this group is distinctly watching more soap operas than this group. As well, we could see that this group has a 
um, just about the same level of well-being as this group but there's a few that are better off here. So what it would explain this, I'm going to propose that this group is maybe women and this group men. Women watch more soap operas, men watch less soap operas, dividing them, making, putting women here and men here, but clearly, the more soap operas somebody watches, they're less likely to be happy. Now, this might be because they're home, um, recovering from surgery. Maybe they're not doing so well. They're watching um, more soap operas. And that's why their well-being is markedly lower. Same for women. More soap operas here. Um, or maybe they really have nothing better to do than to watch soap operas and that could be associated with being um, uh, not feeling so great. I'm not saying that watching soap operas causes someone to be uh, less happy or less content or less healthy. What I'm saying is that there's a tendency given this drawing which is um, made up I just fabricated or invented it, um, is showing that there's a tendency that the people who watch more soap operas are coincidentally less content.